Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection, of course, as usual. Um, today I would like to tell you about building bridges. So essentially that's what we do. And the mathematical terminology that I'm going to use is I'm going to define the genius of a graph and I'm going to show you that it is actually well defined and that's as well as this building bridges comes in. It's a pretty cool idea. Uh, it's kind of a mixture between topology and graph theory. And it's part of, surprise, surprise, topological graph theory. Um, kind of a very, very nice idea. And yeah, so let's get started. So the main theorem will be that it's kind of well-defined. We'll see. Um, so here we go. So if you think of a graph, then essentially it's just an abstract object. It's a collection of vertices. So here we have four vertices and edges. So here we have six edges. I'm not going to mark them. So here's one, for example, and, but it doesn't live anywhere. It's just a collection of vertices and edges. And just the only thing that counts is that you have a, a set of vertices and a set of edges and the edges just remember, um, I'm going for, for example, from vertex A to vertex B here. And whether this S goes like this or is straight or curvy or whatever, or you draw it like this, it doesn't matter because what you see is actually a realization of the graph. So the graph is an abstract object and whatever you draw is a realization of it. And realizations can look very different. So here, those two graphs are the same, but um, the realization is different. So here, this edge here is this edge in the other one. And it, it's really just the same. It connects the same vertices. So it's the same edge, but it's drawn differently. And that's called a realization. And we stick of this as being an embedding into something. Uh, so, for example, planar graphs embed into the plane, and embed just means without the dissections. And I, I stress that again. So, as an abstract graph, this graph has a name actually, K4. So, here's a non planar embedding of it because there is a crossing, or so there is an intersection, but it's still a planar graph because you can actually draw it in the plane. So, note the difference between you have drawn it in the plane and you can draw it in the plane. Again, a graph is an abstract object. And planar graphs are those that you can draw in the plane. The point is you cannot draw all graphs in the plane. So some of them you can, some of them you can't. So here's an example of a graph that you cannot draw in the plane. It is actually a K5. So let me just draw again K5. K5, the 5 is just saying it has five vertices. And the K for complete, uh, complete in German, is just meaning that everything is connected to everything. So if you draw it naively, it will actually just look like, uh, that's a very shitty version, but it will look like this. So it's it's like a star and uh, out on the outside you have a, a little cycle. Uh, but as I said, that's just the abstract graph. So there might be a different way of drawing it and there certainly is a different way of drawing it. And there might be a way of drawing it. Um, so here, for example, I've redirected this edge, which was, uh, maybe I should give it a different color. So I've redirected this edge, which was this one here before, so that you get rid of intersections. And similarly, um, this edge here is redirected to here, but still you can't get rid of those. So I can't redirect, let me give it the green, for example. So this greeny edge here, so it's still intersecting, but if I redirect it like this, I will have an intersection here. So there's essentially nothing I can do. And whatever you do to this graph, this is not a proof, but you can prove that this graph has no planar embedding. No matter what you do, you cannot draw it in the plane. So some graphs are not planar. So this one here is K5 as uh, an example. And you might ask the question, maybe we need to have something more sophisticated than the plane. Maybe we need something more complicated and maybe we then can embed uh, okay, five, for example, into that object. And that's exactly the question I would like to address. So into the plane is just drawing on a piece of paper. It's kind of the easy one, but you don't need to draw on a piece of paper. You can draw on more complicated objects. And maybe that's what you need to do to put this graph here uh, to embed it, which means to draw it without intersections. And you can, if you do it on a torus, which is certainly a more complicated object than the plane, then you can actually do it. So here it goes um, without intersections on the torus. So these two edges here, they go all the way in the back of the torus and come back down here. 
and the blue one goes all the way here and goes in the back and comes up here. So you can you don't need to really redirect the edges. You can just draw them. Uh, so you draw the edges on the torus and they go around so they don't intersect everything else which is in the front. And a similar trick, you can do it here. For example, this vertex needs a connection to this vertex and you can just go around the whole torus all the way around. It's no problem. So you can actually draw K5 on a torus without intersection. We can't do it in the plane, which is the same as the sphere if you want. So if you think about the sphere, this, the terminology for the sphere is S2. So if you think about the sphere, then, well, there's just one point extra that you can just put your finger in and pull it open and you get the plane and every graph is just a finite object so it can avoid this point. So here's my graph. So being embeddable in the sphere is the same as being embeddable in the plane. So K5 doesn't embed into the plane. It's not planar, so it doesn't embed into the sphere, but it does embed into the torus. And the question, which is not so obvious, is somehow can we say in something in general? And the point is, and that's where the genus comes in. Uh, so this has genus one, because there's one handle. You'll see that in a second. And yeah, you can. You can always embed it on a surface. So every graph, here's a theorem, can be embedded into some surface. And the number of handles needed for that surface, and we'll see the handles in a second where they come from, is to call the genus of the graph, the minimal number of those edges. And um, so genus is a notion of topology. So every one of those surfaces uh, here, uh, whatever, um, is of the following form. So it is a sphere with the little handles attached. Right. So the torus is just a sphere with one handle. The double torus is a sphere with two handles. Uh, the triple torus is a sphere with three handles, and so on. You can just attach more and more handles, and everything is of this form. So you're asking, the question is, well, we had the torus already. So the sphere is the one with zero handles, genus zero. The plain, planar graphs are genus zero graphs. Um, everything that goes on a torus, but not on the plane, has genus one. Everything that goes on a double torus, uh, but not on a torus or a plane, has genus two and so on. So you literally just count the number of handles. In general, computing the genus is really, really, really hard. So it's an NP-complete problem. It's ridiculously hard. That's just saying it's really, really hard. Um, but we can do something to at least prove that theorem. So let me prove that theorem for you, because this is not quite obvious, right? The general graph, why should it embed into something, right? The general graph could be arbitrarily complicated. Think of the general graph with a lot of edges. Uh, so they intersect crazily. And you can still do it. And here's how it goes. Uh, so general graph in this in this video means finite. And that's what I'm going to use. So here's the proof that every graph goes onto one of those surfaces. And it's a really beautiful idea. So you just draw your graph, and it might end up with intersections. So here's an intersection. Uh, here's an intersection, for example. And here's an intersection. Just draw it in any way you want. There will be some intersections. And what do you do if you see intersections? Well, if you're planning to build a city or you're in charge of streets in the city or something, so if you have an intersection that you don't like, like a footpath for, for pedestrians crosses a street, what would you do? You would just build a little bridge, right? So you build a little bridge uh, so that the pedestrians are not crossing the street anymore. So you get rid of the crossing by adding a bridge. And that's exactly what you do. So you can add little bridges here. Two in the background, you see uh, S2. So you can just add little bridges to S2, one for each uh, intersection. So now the graph goes over that bridge. So it doesn't cross the other one anymore. But what is a bridge? Well, let's have a look at this bridge here. So this bridge is actually one of those little handles I had before. Uh, so every bridge is a handle. So there you go. You just build enough handles, namely one for each crossing. So you just redirect, you just do the natural thing everyone planning a city would do as well. So we are doing this as humans for, uh, I don't know when the first bridge was built, but it has must been a while ago. So it's actually a cool trick. So and you just use it for graphs, right? So you just, you have an intersection. What do you do to get rid of intersections? You build a bridge. What is a bridge? A bridge is a handle. So that proves. The theorem. And sadly, I said before, let me just comment on that, that this is NP complete. So it should be very hard. This looks very simple to me. 
Problem here is you don't find the minimal genus, so the minimal number, but you just find some number. But still, it proves the theorem because the number you want will be something uh, smaller. OK, I hope you like the story about building bridges. I showed you a theorem, and I proved the theorem by building a bridge. Right? So I say it again. It's actually a pretty straightforward trick. Uh, still pretty beautiful, and we do this as humans, as I said, for ages. I, I don't know when the first bridge was constructed, but that was certainly before I was born, I guess. I'm very old, but it was probably still before I was born. Uh, anyway, so when you ever appear at intersection, what do you do? You build a little bridge so that uh, the pedestrians can cross over the bridge and don't need to cross over the street anymore. And that was the proof. A very beautiful idea, actually. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.